Hi and welcome to my home office from a chilly autumn morning in Sydney. My name's um, Serena Gillam and I graduated from ISF last year, that is 2017. Um, so uh, Chris has asked me to talk about alumni perspectives on feedback and I decided that I would talk about the examiner feedback on my thesis. Um, and I've basically got three tips of how I think um, uh, is an effective way to deal with feedback from your examiners. So number one, unpick the comments. Um, when I first got the comments, uh, even though my examiner results were good results, um, I felt so devastated. <laughs> it's very hard to read the criticism or even the praise of something that has been your baby, your thesis baby. Um, so I found an effective way for me to deal with this was to really unpick the comments. And the way that I did this was through um, a Google spreadsheet that I shared with my supervisors. And I took each comment and unpicked it um, one by one into a line on the spreadsheet. And this leads me to point number two, which is make it easy. So make it easy on yourself, make it easy on your supervisor, make it easy on the RAO, make it easy on the graduate research school. So when I unpicked these comments one by one, I then had um, columns that went across that was like, uh, what page does this refer to in my thesis? Um, what does the original text say? Uh, what, my, what are my first thoughts about addressing this comment? Um, what are my final comments? Um, and first thoughts and final comments, you know, there was a month or two between those where I went back and forth with my supervisors about how I would address certain comments. Um, and something I think is really important is that you, in addressing your examiner's comments, you have to remember that this is within academic culture. And academic culture is the culture of critique and that, um, and perhaps I learned this the hard way, just saying I disagree with this examiner's comment um, isn't really going to cut it. Um, what you need to say is I disagree and the evidence for this is site paper one, site paper two, or the evidence for this is I have examined this in chapter six. You know, theses are, are very long documents and um, some examiners uh, can miss things. So they might say, well, you know, how come you haven't addressed this or addressed that? And you know you have, but it might be buried in a particular paragraph or, or somewhere else. So rather than making um, that the work of your supervisors or the RAO or the Graduate Research School, you need to lay it out for them um, of how the comment, how you're addressing the comment, what page that is on the thesis, what the original text says, whether you amended that text, if you didn't amend the text, what is the reason that you disagree with the examiner or don't want to amend the text? And do you need to back it up with evidence for within, from within the literature? And so this leads me to my final point, which is back yourself. By the time you have written your thesis, you are an emerging researcher. Um, you should have been trained and mentored in doing research. If you haven't, it is too late at this point. Um, so as an emerging researcher, I would say you have the right as well as the obligation to back yourself. That means you won't necessarily agree with your supervisors. You are now the expert in this area, not your supervisors. Um, you won't necessarily agree with the RAO and you won't necessarily agree with your examiners. And that's perfectly okay. That's the whole point of doing a thesis and becoming a researcher, is that you should be able to stand by um, the thesis that you have written and the arguments that you have made. It can be uncomfortable. It can be uncomfortable because it is a process in a way of cutting the apron strings. <laughs> I think that's what they say. Um, uh, with your supervisor or with the institute, particularly if you want to stand by a point that your examiners or your supervisors or your RAO disagree with. Um, but I think it's very, very important that you acknowledge that you um, are no longer a student. I, 
I actually don't think people doing PhDs should be referred to as students. I like the term doctoral researcher. You're a researcher in training and you are an emerging researcher. So back yourself, stand up for what you think is right, back it up by evidence or literature, um, and give yourself time. It's emotional, it's um, very much related to self and identity. It's now almost 12 months since I received my examiner comments and it's been around nine months since I graduated. And it's only now that I can start to read back on my examiner comments and think, well, how might that change what I do in terms of my future research or in terms of papers that I write out of my thesis? That's my tips. Hope that gives you some food for thought.